Welcome to Wine Vault TV, New Zealand's most passionate wine program, and we've only got, from memory, five more episodes until that big 100. Um, and we're going to probably celebrate, I'm not sure what we're going to do, but hopefully get kind of John Campbell on that kind of episode, so that uh, it really does kind of make a master. And I always said that I was going to stop at 50 because I didn't feel very comfortable in the camera. Obviously now we're up to close to 100. Getting up there and um, at a fast and furious pace as well. Um, and today we're just going to concentrate on Waiheke. I'm not sure from all the other episodes whether we've ever done a Waiheke wine before. And Waiheke is quite a, uh, an interesting viticultural area. First planted in the uh, 70s um, by Kim and Jeanette Goldwater. Then closely on the heels of that, Stephen White, now kind of, uh, or aka Serge Blanco from Stony Ridge, who really did kind of plant, he planted um, Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Malbec, Petit Verdot, um, and makes a very kind of true traditional style Bordeaux blended red. And it's pretty much all sold on Premier, so if you find a bottle, kind of ranges between 150 to 250, 300 bucks a bottle. Pretty expensive for a New Zealand New World Bordeaux style wine. Um, and then subsequently, kind of, that's pretty much spread out, the only Tangy Valley, closer to Onarau, and now you've got Tafau, Manawar, which is down the other end, past Onatangi, um, owned by the Spence, Spencers or Spence family, um, that up until fairly recently, I've always thought that wine was pretty average, but tasting their wine recently, made huge leaps and bounds in kind of improving the quality. Um, Obsidian, obviously, uh, it's kind of tainted with a bit of scandal in the, in the 90s. Um, who else is there? Uh, Tomotu, Kennedy Point, who have just done well. Um, I think it's our 06 Syrah that cleaned up and, in London. Um, and pretty much, this first one is only Tangy Road, and it's a 2001 Cabernet Sauvignon Merlot Malbec Cabernet Franc um, blend. And 2001, I mean, it's getting pretty, it's getting old. It's eight years old, so I just found this kind of downstairs in the cellar. So I just wanted to find out whether paying kind of 50 bucks plus, which is where a lot of Waiheke wine kind of sat until fairly recently, um, stands up to that kind of price tag for quality and whether it can sell it well. So, I mean, you can see a bit of aging on that. Um, there's a bit of kind of brick color around the edge. Um, it's quite floral on the nose, actually. It's, it's surprising. I thought it was gonna be almost like vinegar, but uh, it's actually quite floral on the nose. She's no made where she hasn't aged very gracefully at all. A lot of the fruit has dropped out. It's quite acidic. Um, and slightly oxidized, so we'll just give that a little skip. Major pass on that. The next one we have is the 2007 Hay Paddock, which I love doing that sound. Um, which the first vintage was in 06 and got a silver in decanter also I think in the London Wine Awards from memory and the 07 is obviously their second vintage and they, they picked up a gold at the International Wine Challenge in London earlier this year and still kind of about 300 cases being made they've got a fairly dense kind of 15,000 uh, vines planted I mean it's sitting on the shelf for about 35 bucks and it's um, really two friends who have, I guess since the 70s um, or early 80s, kind of decided to make wine and eventually they've um, collaborated and made this wine. Um, and they're Chris, Chris Kelly and Brian Mogridge from memory. And um, they've been instrumental in uh, the New Zealand wine industry for a while. 
And it's got a pretty hefty price tag, considering. Um, and I'm not always sure that because you're boutique that you need to elevate your prices, um, especially if you've got an unknown label. And I know that kind of all, a lot of loving, tender care to the vines has taken place over these last few years. Planted and I think established in 2003, so 2006 first vintage, 2007 second vintage, fairly young vines. And what you do get is you get a classic New World Syrah nose, you get that white pepper almost immediately, followed by a bit of kind of cinnamon and spice, and then you start to get your black fruit, a bit of bramble in there. Which is young, very, very young. But you do get this kind of grippy tannin right away around here. It's just like someone's just put a bit of lemon in there that's just taken all the kind of um, stretch your face, facial muscles around your teeth. And um, it's still got a lot of fruit, but really quite closed. Beautifully imbalanced, but I, I struggled like 35 bucks for a bottle of wine. It's quite expensive. And because they don't make much of it, obviously there's a need to have that kind of price, but I don't think it's a $35 wine. I think this is a $25 wine. And if it was 20 bucks, I'd probably score it 89 points. Because it's 35 points, that tarnishes my kind of uh, perception of the wine slightly. So I'm going to give it kind of 85 points. I just don't think it represents value for money. Considering that you've got Passage Rock that sits fairly close to it at 25 bucks, which I would give kind of um, that kind of 89 plus points. And that's one of the things about kind of New Zealand wine that they, because they're boutique, they feel they need to charge. It, exorbitant prices and it shouldn't be the case you need to get established before you can start charging those uh, those big big kind of prices because 35 bucks you can pick up a pretty decent bottle of Rhone and um, I know these guys have got their clones from the Northern Rhone they, and they've probably made it in a very kind of Northern Rhone style but given the, the conditions on Waiheke and also the soil on Waiheke it's very different to the Rhone 25 bucks, that's what I'm going to pay. Um, we don't currently stock it at the moment, we don't stock either of these two, but uh, I just thought it would be a nice little taster, um, seeing as it did pick up a gold, and there's no doubt that it is very well made wine. Just a shame. Anyway, it's quite nice to taste with you, I haven't done a uh, tasting really for a while, so um, it's quite nice to get back in front of you, and um, yeah, hopefully kind of uh, episode 100, kind of like, uh, we're going to record it on March the 10th, uh, not March, August the 10th, Monday. Um, so we're going to have a, a few people around and have a couple of glasses of wine. Anyway, until next time, thanks very much.